Although the latest sitcoms or blockbuster films might seem fascinating and full of twists and turns, often some of the most amazing revelations can be found right here in the real world. Scientists, historians, and archaeologists spend their lives uncovering truly incredible things about the world in which we live, some of which might seem almost unbelievable. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we will be looking at three interesting discoveries and how they impacted our understanding of the world. Scientists grew chickens with dinosaur legs to prove how evolution works. Sometimes, science experiments can border on the downright strange, as was certainly the case with a series of experiments carried out by scientists in Chile seeking to understand elements of the evolutionary process that gave us none other than the very birds that fill our skies today. Many people believe that when the mysterious asteroid that caused the mass extinction of the dinosaurs landed on Earth, all the dinosaurs disappeared for good. However, we now know that some of these prehistoric creatures survived and evolved into birds. In an attempt to demonstrate the path that such an impressive leap could have taken, researchers genetically modified chickens so that they developed strange, tubular fibulas on their legs. These bones were commonly found in such avian dino as the Archaeopteryx, who had a second tibial bone next to the hollow fibula. Evolutionary researchers can follow the path of these two bones through the intervening millennium. As the fibula shortened, thinned, and developed more splinter-like ends, while the tibia sharpened and shortened so much that it no longer reached the ankle. Although modern bird embryos still show early signs of developing the proportionately longer tibular fibula, these bones ultimately end up with the short, thin, splinter-like bones that are typical of birds today. So, why would researchers be interested in giving chickens these dinosaur legs? Essentially, the team hoped to be able to better understand what biological processes drove the change from dinosaur legs to modern bird legs throughout the course of evolution. Because bird embryos possess legs that still resemble those of their ancient dino ancestors, researchers were able to isolate and subsequently inhibit the IHH gene which allowed the experimental chickens to continue to develop the longer legs promised in their embryos. And what they observed as the legs continued to grow was interesting. Normally, when bones grow, their shafts reach full size first, and the ends continue to develop and lengthen. However, the fibula of modern birds and chickens stops at the ends first, meaning that something, likely the calcaneal bone, at the distal end of the fibula is actively preventing it from reaching dinosaur-like lengths. Turning off the IHH gene removed this blockage, allowing the ends of the bone to continue to grow in order to reach Archaeopteryx lengths. Although these Frankenstein dinosaur chickens were not viable and were not able to hatch, the seemingly strange experiment succeeded in its goal of understanding the biological processes that fueled the evolutionary changes that shortened the legs of birds over time. Alexander Vargas, a member of the research team, explained the goal of the project as focused on single traits to test specific hypotheses. Not only do we know a great deal about bird development, but also about the dinosaur bird transition, which is well documented by the fossil record. This leads naturally to hypotheses on the evolution of development that can be explored in the lab. With separate experiments creating chickens with such dinosaur features as feet and beaks, it may only be a matter of time before science is able to unravel evolution so much that they are left with tiny chicken-like dinosaurs. Medieval Italian man replaced his amputated hand with a knife. Prosthetics are one element of life that has undoubtedly benefited from improvements in technology through the years. In fact, archaeologists recently uncovered remains that appear to be a man who replaced his amputated hand with nothing other than a knife. The man was found buried in a northern Italian Longobard necropolis that seems to date back between the 6th and 8th centuries CE, and contains hundreds of fascinating human and animal skeletons. Upon initial study of the remains, the grave in question appears to be an older man, especially for the time, who was between 40 and 50 years old. His arm had been amputated at the forearm by blunt force trauma, but researchers were unable to determine whether this amputation was intentional 
or was the result of an accident or battle wound, especially considering the warrior tendencies of the Longobard people. Regardless, such an amputation when combined with the presence of what was believed to be a knife as a prosthesis is an incredibly rare archaeological find, and the team of archaeologists promptly began by intensive study of the circumstances of the grave and the man within, releasing their findings in a report published in the Journal of Anthropological Sciences. The main focus of the study was to determine whether or not the knife, which was found placed across the man's chest with the butt aligned with the end of his amputated wrist, was truly being used as a prosthetic device, and compelling evidence points to the fact that it was. For starters, the remains of a buckle and decomposed leather at the amputation site suggests that the knife was originally attached to the arm. The end of the amputated arm also displayed changes such as the development of a callus and bone spur, which are consistent with the types of pressure that would have been applied with a prosthesis. His body also portrayed telltale signs of extended prosthetic wear, such as extensive degradation of the teeth on the right side and an unnatural C-shaped bone ridge on the shoulder, both of which likely would have developed as a result of years of tightening leather straps using his teeth and opposite arm. Given the warrior nature of the society in which the man lived, it seems only natural that he would have chosen to strap a knife to the place where his hand would have been. Due to the presence of advanced bone healing at the amputation site, archaeologists know that he lived for many years after his injury, which can tell us a lot about the type of people the ancient Longobards were. According to the paper, this man is fascinating because he shows a remarkable survival after a forelimb amputation during the pre-antibiotic era. Not only did he adjust very well to his condition, but he also did so with the use of a culturally derived device, along with considerable community support. The survival of this Longobard male testifies to community care, family compassion, and a high value given to human life. Studies like this one of ordinary men in a community who might have lived under extraordinary circumstances can tell researchers much about the inner workings of their society and are valuable sources of information about the past. Researchers find unsafe levels of industrial chemicals in drinking water of 6 million Americans. When it comes to your drinking water, many people acknowledge that it is likely not as pristine as they would like to believe, but would prefer not to think about what might be lurking within the pipes that stretch below their cities. However, for over 6 million Americans, what was hiding undetected in their regular drinking water was unsafe levels of toxic industrial chemicals. This shocking revelation was uncovered by a team of researchers from Harvard University who examined over 36,000 samples of drinking water and evaluated the concentrations of six types of polyfluoroalkyl and perfluoroalkyl substances, or PFAs, within each sample, and what they found was extremely concerning. They reported that, out of 4,864 water supplies, 194 had evident contamination by the chemicals, with 66 of these displaying levels above the Environmental Protection Agency's recommended safety thresholds. Typically, PFAs are used in products that require a fluoropolymer coating or are made to resist heat, oil-based stains, or water. These products are incredibly far-reaching and include clothing, non-stick surfaces, food packaging, furniture, electrical insulation, and many more. The problem with these types of chemicals is that, once released into the environment, whether by accident or as a waste product, they never break down and have been linked to cancers, hormone issues, and many other serious health conditions. Because the use of these chemicals is so widespread, they are likely lurking everywhere across the environment in different quantities, and, although they are recognized as a harmful contaminant by the Environmental Protection Agency, they are not regulated by the federal government. The results of this study bring the issue of PEAS contamination into a new light, as in total, the water supplies that were compromised served over 6 million Americans, and now officials must wrestle with the matter of what to do in the face of such dangerous levels of contamination, as well as how to prevent the chemicals from reaching the waterways in the first place. As the bureaucracy in charge of making these regulatory laws reviews the current systems in the hopes of finding a way to prevent future damage, 
the immediate action must be taken by the smaller, more localized governments who have installed high-powered filters to main water lines, dispersed bottled drinking water, and endorsed individual carbon filters for use in private homes. This study is simply the latest in a long line that serves to demonstrate just how much more ubiquitous chemicals are in our lives than previously thought, and how much more action likely needs to be taken to ensure drinking water safety. But what do you make of these interesting discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.